Come on, I want you to know we serve a good God in this place. If you believe he's a good God, give him some praise right now. Let him know he's a faithful and a loving and a merciful God. Father, we lift your name up. We give you praise and thanks, God. We are so full of joy knowing, Lord, that you are so merciful. You're so gracious. You're here in this room today. Father, you see every heart. You see all the pain, Lord, that we that, that so many have been dealing with. You see the trials that we're facing. You see the turmoil, Lord. Someone has walked in today, God, with one of the biggest fights of their life. God, you see it. You know. You're very close to their heart. And I pray that today, God, that you would reveal, Lord, your heart to us, how good and how faithful you are. You can even turn things around, Lord. Turn them around for our good, God. We thank you that today we're going to hear a word from you. Today you're going to speak right to our hearts. Today someone's going to get saved. Today our hearts are going to be transformed. A stony heart, a cold heart is going to turn soft, Lord, and we're going to come to know you in a fresh way today. So have your way. Speak to our hearts. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. We all say, come on, give Jesus one more shout of praise today if you're excited to be in the house. You may be seated today. Give your neighbor a round of uh, a high five. I was going to say give your neighbor a round of applause. You can do that too. Give your neighbor a round of applause if they just like, man, you just, you're awesome. So good to see you all today. Happy Sunday. Um, just want to say a special shout out to our pastor, Pastor Marco and Pastor Lisa. Don't we have the best pastors in the world? Thank you, Pastor Marco, for the honor just to be able to preach and bring the word today. Uh, my name is Christian. I'm one of the pastors here at The Way, along with my wife. She's sitting up here front row, looking beautiful. And uh, we just officially uh, hit our two years in marriage mark. So we're celebrating two years of marriage. And so I'm so excited to bring the word today. But how many are ready to jump into this word this morning? Um, we've been on a series called the Holy Ghost. We've been hearing some amazing just words from God about the Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost in the season and time. Today, what I want to teach and what I want to talk about, which is a question that I've been hearing coming up quite often, is how do I hear the voice of the Holy Spirit? You know, just recently, I got a chance to, to kind of uh, receive some prayer requests that were written down by some young adults here in the church. And a lot of what I've seen that were written down prayers were, God, I want to hear your voice again. I just want to hear you closely. And I think that that's a common prayer that a lot of us have is that we don't know how to hear clearly the voice of God. How many want to know exactly how you can hear the voice of God? I'm here to let you know this morning, it's not complicated. It's not a calculus equation. It's not a, a giant physics problem. It's very simple. And I, I'm so thankful we serve a God who's very clear and very simple. He's going to make it very clear for you. As a matter of fact, he's going to make a way for you. And today we're going to learn how to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit again in Jesus' name. I want to read a quick scripture, John 14, 26. It says, but the Holy Spirit will come and help you. Someone say, thank you, Holy Spirit. Someone say, I need some help. Look at someone next to you and be like, you need some help too. If you know them. If you don't know them, don't tell them that. Just. But the Holy Spirit will come and help you because the Father will send the Spirit to take my place. The Spirit will teach you everything. Someone say, thank you, Holy Spirit. And will remind you of what I said while I was with you. You know, for many of us, the beginning of our walk with God it was a passionate pursuit. We were fired up, ready for whatever God had for us. We walked closely with him. We listened to his voice very closely and attentively. The voice of the Holy Spirit was clear to us. And then somewhere along that line, there came a time where we started to just neglect the voice of God. We neglected our communion or our time with him. And we didn't rely as much as we once did on the Holy Spirit. We started to believe this lie that I got this. I'm good. You know what's, what's sad is that God 
is actually the source of your successes and your victories and your wins. He's the source of it all. But the trick the enemy plays is he begins to fix your thoughts not on what God did, but what on you did, what on what you did. And when the enemy fixes your thoughts on what you did, you start to think that you're the savior of your own life. And the trap the enemy is playing with a lot of us is he's saying, you don't need to spend that much time with God because look at how much you did for yourself. You're smart, you're talented, you're good looking, and you all are, all of you. There's no one in here that's not smart or good looking. I'm just letting you guys know that. We have a great church. You are all those things. You're talented, you're gifted, you're amazing. And the enemy, but the enemy will have you believe and think that the reason and the source of your success all rests within you. And the enemy will trick and try and get us to do this one thing. No longer rely, as we once did, on the voice of the Holy Spirit. And this happens not overnight. This happens gradually and quietly. Little by little, we lean less and less on God, and we start to lean a little more on our talents. And if we're not careful, we'll lose all of our awareness and we'll start to drift our focus from the voice of the Holy Spirit. Today, I'm believing we're going to get back to relying all of our strength with everything we have on the voice of the Holy Spirit. We're going to get that back today. Nowadays, many Christians struggle with this. How many know that that's true? But what I've learned that the problem isn't that the Holy Spirit is not speaking to us. The problem, even sometimes, is that not that we don't hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is speaking. The problem is we don't recognize the voice of the Holy Spirit. You ever been in a crowded room and someone that you know starts to speak? It could be your spouse. Be your, your mom, your dad, it could be your kids. You're in a playground full of kids, but you know when your kid says something. You know the voice. You know it's amazing. There's there's this documentary I saw on, on penguins. It's the cutest documentary I've ever seen. Like <laughs> um, these penguins, there's like thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of penguins, and they're all little baby penguins and they're chirping for their mom. And I don't know how, it's, it's got to be God. But those penguins know distinctly the chirp and the call of their little kid. Or whatever you call the little baby penguin. And what's crazy is, in the same way, when you know a voice very distinctly and very closely, you can pull it out of a busy and a chaotic room. And what I believe God wants us to get today is becoming so familiar with the voice of the Holy Spirit that no matter what is going on in your life, you're able to tap all the way in and pay attention to what he's telling you. How many know we need that in the middle of a storm? In the middle of a battle, you need a word from God. In the middle of a fight, you need to hear from him. What I don't want is in the middle of my fight, I can't find God. I want to be able to tap in so closely in the darkest moments of my life. I want to be able to hear very clearly of the direction and the, and, the, and the call of God on my life. We need to be able to hear him. We need to recognize his voice. Because without him, we can't even receive a word. Without him, we can't pray. Without him, we can't do anything spiritual. We need the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to give you three. We're going to talk about three things today. Here's the three ways we hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. You guys ready? Number one, be still. Someone say, be still. Just let that sink in. Be still. Psalms 46.10 says this, be still and know that I am God. I know when I'm not still, well, you can tell when someone is stressed out. Tapping their leg like this, like. Fidgeting, trying to do this, scratching. Man, you're stressed out, bro. Are you okay? You good? I know when I'm stressed. My wife does. My my wife can read my mannerisms. She does this to me all the time. Like, and I don't know. I'm like, are you a psychic or something? How'd you know this? But I'm giving it away. I'm like scratching my head. I'm tapping my foot. And what she does, she just puts her hand on my back. And I get, and that's a little signal I think from God sometimes. Like, just be still. I got you. You know, there's times in our life where 
we're listening and we're believing so many lies of the enemy that we, we give no time for God just to speak into our lives and remind us, I got you. Remember that I already wrote your life story. It's already written out. Remember that I formed you. And before I formed you in your mother's womb, I already knew you. Remember that I created you with a plan and a purpose. Remember this. Remember, remember that nothing is impossible for me, and I am on your side, and I'm in your corner. Remember these things. But it's so hard for us to hear this when we're not still. We're worried, and we're stressed, and we're anxious. And we don't allow the voice of the tender voice of the Holy Spirit to speak into our lives. So worried and stressed and chaotic. But the scripture is saying here, be still. We can't come to know God in the busyness of our everyday life. You, know, you want to know the number one place where the Holy Spirit will lead you? I know a lot of us sometimes think that the Holy Spirit is leading me to preach up there on the stage. The Holy Spirit's leading me to lead millions and reach the nations and, and to do great things. You want to know the number one place? I'm sure he's doing all that. But the number one place he's leading you is in a secret place, is in a quiet place with God. Yet, that's one of the places, that's one of the areas where we resist, we resist God the most. We'll say yes to the stage. We'll say yes to the big thing. We'll say yes, Lord, send me to the nation. Lord, we'll say yes to the big promotion. We'll say yes to the big move. How can we say yes to the grand thing that God has for you? We can't say yes. We can't be still in the presence of God. The number one place that the Holy Spirit leads you is in your quiet, holy time with the Lord. That's where he's leading you. That's where he wants you to be. In order to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, we need to obey that first instruction to just go into a quiet place with the Lord, in a secret place. Look at Matthew 6.6. 6. How does that look? How do I go to a secret place? Well, the scripture answers that. Matthew 6, verse 6. But when you pray, go to your room. I remember that saying when I was little. Go to your room. It says, go to your room, shut the door. And pray to your father who is present in that secret place. How interesting is that? That God is waiting for you in that secret place. We're searching for him all over. We're frustrated with the results we're getting in life. We're frustrated in our relationships. We're frustrated in our ministry. We're frustrated in the call. We're frustrated in all these things. God is saying is, I have all the answers and have all the solutions and I've laid a place for you and I've, I've laid the table for you and I have a seat for you and I'm waiting for you in the secret and quiet place. If you want to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, you're going to hear that most loudly and most clearly in your quiet time with the Lord. Get to your quiet, secret place and be still. You know, there's a... Uh, Every time that you're prompted to spend time with the Lord in secret, he's trying to tell you something. He's got something he wants to give you. And what I don't ever want to do is miss one of those instructions. I got a question for you. Can you afford to miss a word from God in the season that you're in right now? The instruction that God has for you. And, and, and trust me, I, know, I understand. And maybe you're going through something that I can't understand right now. Maybe there's a season that you're dealing with or, 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 or challenges that you're facing that maybe no one else knows about. I guarantee you this, God knows and he knows the solution and he knows how he's going to get you through it. But I want to ask you a question. In the season that you're in, can you afford to miss that tender and clear, powerful voice of the Holy Spirit in the season that you're in right now? We can't afford to miss not one word in the season. I believe God is going to begin to do something great. We've received words, even prophetic words these past few weeks about what God is going to begin to release in this church, in our families, to our unsaved loved ones. God is begin, going to begin to break through and do new things. But right now in this time, is not a season to pull back from the voice of God and start leaning on our own understanding. 
Right now is the time to lean into the voice of the Holy Spirit all the more and spend time with him in that still, quiet place. How many know what I'm saying here? Psalms 37.5 says, commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him and he will help you. You know, the scary thing is that we've grown, we've, we've grown comfortable with living without the Holy Spirit. We've become okay with it. We're fine with it. We go on throughout our routine, our day-to-day. We let life pass us by. Our years are going by. Kids are growing up. People are getting older. Life is passing us by, and we're okay living life without the voice or the power of the Holy Spirit manifested in our life. I can't imagine what great blessings God has for us that we could be missing in our days. At some point, we need to come to a place of reckoning, a place of repentance, where we say, God, I'm done ignoring you. God, I'm sorry. God, I'm sorry depending on my own self, depending on my paycheck. God, I serve my paycheck more than I serve you. God, I'm sorry for living life for myself and my pleasure and my own well-being and my convenience and my shame. God, I'm sorry for being ashamed to live for you. God, I'm sorry for falling under the pressure of trying to look and fit in with my friends. God, I'm going to live for you. God, I'm going to serve you. God, I'm going to hear your voice from this moment forward. I want to hear and know your voice. I wonder if there's anybody here today that's saying, God, I want to know your voice more than I ever have. I want to be closer to you and I want to know you in a deep way. We need to know, we need to come back to the voice of the Holy Spirit. If we're doing ministry, I'm going to speak to somebody right now, leader even today. If you're doing ministry without spending time with the Spirit, you're not doing ministry. You're doing religion. Religion, religion is like playhouse for kids. We're pretending that we're doing the Christian thing. It's like when kids play house when they're little. Kid plays like a, you want to know what it is? Religion is imaginary Christianity. Religion is imaginary spirituality. It's not actually the real thing. And we're depending on a show and an act in order to do things of God. You want to know something that's crazy? And and this is what some will talk about. You want to know what's crazy? The enemy is okay if you check in and out of church. The enemy is fine. The enemy is fine. The enemy actually will make a deal with you. The enemy will say, go ahead and do your little church thing. Go ahead and do an hour and a half. You can give that to God. Just as long as you give me the rest of your week, you give me my time. That's what the enemy is trying to do. And religion will have us doing that. Religion will have us so trapped. You want to know one of the quickest ways to stifle the fire and the passion for God? It's religion. It's doing a God thing, but without God. Just to, just picture this, trying to be spiritual without the spirit. That makes no sense. How can you be a spiritual person and eliminate the Holy Spirit? It doesn't work. There is no such thing. And what will happen to us, and this has happened, you'll begin to fall out of love with God, and you'll begin to get burnt out, and you, want, you won't know why. You'll get angry at others. You'll begin to get angry at God. You'll begin to get frustrated at the Lord, and you'll point all your frustration towards him. When in reality, he's been trying to speak to you this whole time. But you've been serving religion, not God. I'm here to let you know, I'm glad you're in church today. And I'm proud of you for being here and for tuning in online. But if God doesn't have your own, your heart, what you're doing is not going to feed your spirit. What you need to do is fully surrender everything you have to God. Don't don't let the enemy trick you to think that if you check in a church that you'll be fine. You're here so that you can surrender your heart to God. This isn't a fix-all. This is a hospital for people that are broken and hurting. This is a place for addicts to come and be set free. This is a place for the name of Jesus to be proclaimed so that we can finally come to a place to be saved and set free and healed. There is no other way. There is no other program. There is no other method. There is no other answer except full surrender and giving our life to Jesus. Nothing else is going to do it. It's time we stop serving religion and we start serving Jesus. Come on. I wonder if we got any servants of Jesus in the place. How do we hear the voice of the Holy Spirit? You got to be still. You got to be with the Lord. Number two, you got to read the word. 
You have to read your Bible. Oh man, I don't, I don't have. What, what, what's our excuse? I'm too busy. Well, you were definitely not too busy to post on Instagram and to check out everyone's page. Can I, can I tell it like it is, guys? Can I? Is that okay on Sunday? I'm too busy. Or, um, oh, I don't have a Bible. Right. You know, the Bible is the number one most sold book in the history of time. They don't even put it on the charts. It's so, it blows everyone out of the water that it's not even worth, it's like, it's a given. The Bible's the number one most sold. There's a Bible app. There's a million Bibles probably at our house right now. There's some collecting dust, but that's okay. You know what? It's time we blow off the dust, we crack open a book, and we see what God is trying to say. God, I can't hear you. You're not speaking to me. He says, I've been speaking to you, and my word has actually been sitting on your shelf. Lord, help us. John 10. Look at John 10, verse 3. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep recognize his voice and come to him. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. After he has gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them, and they follow him. Why? Why do they follow him? Because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger. They will run from him because they don't know his voice. You're going to run to the voice that you know the most. I have some news for you. There is a voice that you are giving all of your attention to right now. Could be the voice of God or could be the voice of the enemy. But you are going to run to the voice that you know the most. I'll say this, actually. You're gonna, your life is going to be led by the voice that you're most familiar with. It's so funny. It says you're going to run from a stranger. I remember when I was little, um, anyone ever got lost, like, in a mall or in a grocery store when you were a kid? Why is that so traumatizing? <laughs> I still remember. I remember we were at the mall. I think it was Ontario Mills, back when Ontario Mills was, like, packing. Um, it's so cool now, but it's, it's different. Um, I remember when Ontario Mills were going in and I'm holding my mom's hand. My mom's hand's about right here. That, that's how tiny I was at that time. I'm looking around. And I think I let go of my mom's hand. And if you, as a kid, I, I don't know, I must have had ADD or something. Like I would see one thing and get distracted. My wife tells me I do that sometimes even in conversation. She knows when I'm like listening to her. And she knows when my thoughts start going somewhere else. Husbands, you know what I'm talking about? Wives, you know what I'm talking about? Wives. So I, it happened to me as a kid. Um, it's just, I don't know. I didn't, God needs to set me free. Um, so I'm looking at stuff. I let go of my hand. I'm looking at stuff. Okay. And then I go and I grab what I think is my mom's hand. And I'm like, this hand, what happened to your hand, mom? I'm just in my head. I'm thinking, she's over here. My mom got really manly out of nowhere. And I look, I look up, and it's a random stranger that's just like, who are you? But it's so funny, the stranger actually held my hand. I'm like, you weirdo, why would you? And so I quickly let go. I don't know who this man is, who this person is. And I'm, I'm like, mom, I start crying. I'm looking everywhere. I can't find my mom. This lady, she she picks me up, and she's just the sweetest lady. I, I wish I could find her one day. She carries me, and she's, like, helping me look for my mom. We're going everywhere. I finally hear my mom's voice in the distance. I hear her saying, Chris, Chris, I'm over here. And I go to my mom. Picture little Chris with tears rolling down his face. I say all, all that to say this. I knew, even at a little, little, little age, I knew what voice I was supposed to follow, and I knew what, who a stranger was. The stranger is someone I had no association with. I had, I had no time spent with them. I didn't know if they had my, full, my benefit, my best interest in mind, or if they were there to hurt me. I didn't know who that guy was. I don't know what was going on, but I knew who I was looking for. I was looking for the one I was familiar with. And in the same way, we're going to look for the person, and we're going to be led by, and we're going to start to gravitate towards the one we're most familiar with. The way to hear and know the voice of the Holy Spirit is to become so familiar with his voice 
that you can make a distinction from his voice and the voice of the enemy. Look at this scripture, John 10, verse 3. Oh, I said that. So look at verse 4. It says, after he's gathered his flock, he walks ahead of him, and they follow him. Why? Because they know his voice. They know his voice. In those situations where you need to know what God is saying, you need to make yourself familiar with his voice. And the way you make yourself familiar with God's voice is you make himself familiar with his word. God writes just like, God speaks just like he writes. God speaks. I can't hear the voice of God. I don't know where he's at. Well, just go to the word because he speaks just like he writes. If you want to hear the voice of God, get to your Bible. The Bible is the written, active, and alive word of God, and he speaks exactly how he writes. And if you want to become familiar with the voice and be able to make a distinction and say, that's the enemy, but this is God, what you need to do is run to your word and make yourself familiar with his voice. My question to you, is God more of a familiar voice to you, or is he more of a stranger to you? Is God a stranger to you? Do you not know how God speaks or he talks? He's made his word available for you. It's a love letter that he's written to you with instructions, with encouragement, with power, with life, with fire. It's all, it's all in the Bible. He's given it all to you. How many are thankful? Someone say, thank you, Holy Spirit, for the word. You know, the Bible says in 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. So, in other words, if you know the word, you know the voice of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is responsible for the written word of God. The Holy Spirit was part of all of the process. It's the inspired, it's the breathed out word of God. So, when you know his voice, you're able to make that distinction. The enemy's tricky. The enemy wants to plant seeds of doubt in your mind. I said this earlier, but the enemy is okay if you give God a little bit of time, just as, you, just as long as you give him an opportunity to steal it later. The Bible says in John 10.10, 10, the thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. The enemy's objective is for you to come into a place like this, to get a good word, only for, only for you to meet with him so he can take that word right out of your hands. The, the, see, God is a jealous God. God's not going to share you with anybody. God says you cannot serve two masters. You can have no idols before me. No other gods before me. You're either going to live for me or you're going to not live for me. And he said, the Bible says, he, it's like he spits the lukewarm out of his mouth. So God's not going to share you. But you know the enemy, he's so perverted. The enemy is perverted in the way he treats you. He's willing to share you a little bit just as long as you give him some space and some time. The enemy wants an area in your heart. The enemy wants to take captive in something in your life. The enemy doesn't want you to surrender one thing. Maybe it's some other things. Yeah, give them those things. But don't surrender your, don't surrender this. I want you to keep my depression. This is the enemy's objective. Keep the anxiety. Keep the fear. Keep the hidden sin. Keep the addiction. You can give all everything else, but let me keep this area. The enemy is tricky. But what God is saying today, that is breaking in the name of Jesus. We're no longer going to give the enemy any. Come on. I wish we had anybody in here who was saying, I'm, I'm going to give up everything that the enemy has been trying to hold on in my life. I'm giving up the addiction. I'm giving up the lies. I'm giving up this lie that, that I'm not qualified, that I'm not loved by God. I'm giving that all up. And I'm going to receive every word that God has for me. How many are receiving the word that God has for you today? And number three, walk in obedience. Walk in obedience. Look at John 14, starting from verse 15. It says, if you love me, obey my commandments. And I will ask the Father... And he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. Someone say, thank you, Holy Spirit. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him. And it doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later 
will be in you. You know that your sensitivity to the voice of God grows with consistent obedience. I'll say it again. Your sensitivity to the voice of the Holy Spirit grows with consistent obedience. You can, you can make yourself more sensitive to his voice. And you can make yourself less sensitive to his voice through your obedience. Sin clouds your ability to recognize when God is speaking. He's always speaking to you. He always has a plan and purpose. But are you listening? Are we tuned in? Are we tapped into what God is saying? And the more we obey the voice of God, the more we will hear him. The more we tune in and tap into what he's telling us, the more we will receive. But I wonder how many of us feel like we're not hearing from God because we've already rejected the words that he's given you. He's given you instruction. It's time to surrender that. And we said, I don't know about that, God. Can I spin the wheel again? Give me a different word. And you're searching, and you're searching, and you're searching, and you're searching, and you got nothing. Because God is calling you to be obedient with the word he's given you. Trust in him. Trust in his call. Even if it seems crazy, even if it seems like it doesn't make sense for you in the season, you have to trust in the voice of the Holy Spirit. I wonder if we're giving more weight to people around us than we are to the voice of God. And I don't mean the godly people in your life because God will use godly people in your life to speak some life into you. But I, mean, I wonder if we're giving more attention to the economy. I wonder if we're giving more attention to the news, more attention to, what, uh, uh, to a gossip, more attention to what people are saying around us, and we're giving less attention to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Well, God is saying, I'm calling you to be obedient to my voice, not to another voice. And in your obedience, you will grow in your familiarity and your sensitivity to my voice. If you want to hear the Holy Spirit better, Obey him. It's as simple as that. You know, look at, look at verse, look at Romans 8, 5. Did you know you can actually become more familiar with the voice of the enemy than with the voice of God? Look at Romans 8, 5. Those who are dominated by the sinful nature, what do they do? What does that mean? Those who are living life for my sinful nature. I'm just living life to sin what do they do it says they think about sinful things but those who are controlled by the holy spirit what does that mean it's those that are living for god those that are living a life to please god those that are living out a life that's so in love with god what do they do it says they think about things that please the spirit so letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to what death it leads to what but letting the spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. Life and peace. You know that you can become more familiar with the enemy's voice. But all that will lead to is a life full of sin. And a life full of sin results in one thing. Death and decay. Or we can change our mind can change your mind about how we've been living. And a fancy or a Christianese word for change your mind is repent. I can repent. I could change my mind about how I've been living. I could change my mind about the voice that I've been listening to. I could change my mind about how I've been conducting myself. I could change my mind right now. What's stopping you from changing your mind about living for sin and to start living for God? What's stopping you? Is it someone's opinion? Is it what's going to take place? What's preventing you? Today's the day and today's the moment for you to tune out of what the enemy is saying and start tuning into what God is saying so you can live a life once and for all and walk out your call of God on your life. Today is that day. Whatever's dominating your mind is leading your life. Your actions are a reflection of what's in here. What are we thinking about? I'm consumed by these thoughts. You know, we need the Holy Spirit's help in that. How many know that that's true? I need the Holy Spirit's help to give me his thoughts, to give me his mindset, to give me a new way of thinking. I need him for that. 
And I believe today he's restoring minds. The Bible says that we're transformed by the renewing of our mind. Today, God is going to transform somebody in this room. It might be you. A whole new lifestyle. A whole new way of living. A whole new thought process. A whole changed life. If you come today, talk to the Holy Spirit. He gives us everything we need in our life. The Bible says he's our advocate. You know what the word advocate means? Actually, it even means this. It's the person, or it's the one assigned to go by your side for your aid. The Holy Spirit has been assigned to your life for your aid, for your benefit. You know, you weren't even saved without the help of the Holy Spirit. You didn't give your life to the Lord without the Holy Spirit. Today, you may, you, may, you may not have been reminded of God at all. I haven't been living for him. I haven't been doing his work. The Holy Spirit is just reminding you. Tug at your heart. Draw you to the love of the living Savior. That's what he's doing. And if, you, if you believe this lie, God doesn't want you. God wouldn't have anything to do with you. That's a lie. If you look at this last verse. It says, even though you are evil, ouch, even though you are evil, you know how to give good gifts to your children. I'm just saying, look, we're not perfect. We make mistakes, but we still want to give good gifts to our children. Watch this. It says, how much more will your father who is in heaven, your father who loves you, your father who's full of mercy, your father who Will he give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Today you can ask him for the help of the Holy Spirit. He's ready. He's hovering. He's ready to release it. I want you to bow your heads right where you're at. Just bow your heads right where you're seated. Close your eyes for a second. Just reflect on everything that I've said today. Holy Spirit, right now, he's helping you best decision of your life to follow him to give your life to him to give everything to him right now is the time don't resist anymore don't hold back you know today what, what's coming you know today what he's calling you to do he's calling you to let go to give him everything right now is the time may seem like, look, I'm not ready. I'm not, I need to go fix some things first. Don't, don't believe that lie either. The enemy will have you thinking that you have to go do cleanup before you come to God. No, God is, God is, this is a hospital, God. And we're coming to the only one who can heal us. No one checks into the ER after they've healed themselves. We come to this place to the heart of God because we know what we need there. We need a Savior. Don't wait another day because you don't know if you have tomorrow and the day, the moment you die, it's too late. You have time right now. You know that we've all sinned, we've all made mistakes. The Bible says the wage of our sin is death. Not just that we're going to die but eternal death, eternal separation from God. That means because of our sin, we will go to hell. I know you don't want to hear that. That's the bad news. I got good news for you. God loves you so much that while you were still a sinner, while you were still in that condition, he gave Jesus to die on a cross for your sins. In other words, Jesus came in and paid the price that you owed Jesus didn't owe it. Jesus didn't have sin. He didn't have to pay for his own sin because he never sinned. He died because you sinned so that you can be forgiven and have a new start. Today, 
You don't have to go clean your life up. Just give your life to Jesus. All you need to do is put your faith in Jesus today. And you can be forgiven of your sin. Repent of your sins, which means change your mind and give your life to him. And today, you can come to know him forever and ever. If you're saying, that's me. I need Jesus in my life. I need to give him my heart. I don't know if there, if I were to die today, if I'd go to heaven, I want to know for sure. If I were to pass away today, that I'd be in eternity in heaven with God forever because I put my faith in him. If you're ready to put your faith in Jesus, then when I count to three, I just want you to raise your hand. The count of three, right from your seat. One, two, three. Just raise your hand so I could see it. Keep your hand up. I see your hand. I see your hand. Anybody else? Say, oh, you're saying that's me. I, that's me. I want to give my life. I see your hand. I see your hands right here. I see your hand right here. Keep your hand up so I can see it. I just want to see your hand for a moment. I see those hands, all those hands back there. Anybody else? You're saying that's me. I see all those hands. I see that whole row of hands right here. I see your hands over here. You're saying, Anybody else? You're saying, I need to come back to Jesus. Can you do me a favor? Can we all stand to our feet? And for those that raise your hand, I want you to do one more thing. Listen to me. For those that raise your hand, do me a favor. Would you make your way into the aisle? And would you come up here to the front so we can pray for you? And we can congratulate you? Come on, church, can we give a big round of applause for all those that raise their hand and are coming forward today? If you raise your hand, come on up. We want to pray with you. We want to congratulate you. Come on, church, let's get excited. Let's get pumped up. Let's get loud. Come on, right now, let's get excited. This is a big deal. This is a big moment. The precious blood of Jesus Christ Oh, come to the altar the Father's arms are open. Come on, make your way forward. You're saying, that's me. That's me. I need Jesus right now. I need to give him my Come on, they're still coming up. Let's clap for them. Let's make sure no one comes up without us applauding them. We're excited for everyone that's coming forward. We're celebrating with you. Our new brothers and sisters in the Lord. Father's Thank you, Jesus. Yes. I want to do one more. I want to make one more call. I want to make one more call. And this is for those that are saying, I need to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit again. I've been distant. I haven't been hearing his voice. And I need right now to start leaning back on him again, rather than leaning on my own judgment and my own opinion and understanding there's no shame in that decision. This would be the best decision you ever made. If you're saying that's me, I need to start hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit again. I need you quickly to make your way out of your seat and come up to the front. You're saying I need to tap in again. I need to come to the voice of the Holy Spirit again. Make your way out quickly. If you're saying that's me, that's me. Come on out. Come on, church. Just clap for those that are coming forward even now. you guys arms are open yes. wide forgiveness yes. was part with the precious blood of jesus come on church they're still coming we're clapping for them I, I pray we never get tired of celebrating even one soul coming to the lord or one one believer coming in, into a place of freedom and healing in their life Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to make a call for discipleship group leaders, for altar workers. We need some more people up here. If you're a DG leader, we need a group. We have a few people over here that need some attention. And we have a group over here that needs some help. DG leaders, if you can make your way forward. God is so good. Everyone that's up, everyone that came up here, just look at me for just a quick second. We're going to help you in this process. We're so proud of you. What we're going to do, we're going to walk with you. We're going to help you. We're going to help you get baptized. We're going to help you live for God. We have a class here. It's called Holy Warriors. It's where we're going to teach you how to live for God. Teach you how to pray. Teach you how to read your word. Teach you how to follow him. You're not in this alone. In this class, you'll have a growth coach. you have someone's going to do life with you. And we're going to get you all the way plugged in. Just know this. We're going to teach you how to fight this fight. You're not alone. How many, how many want to learn how to pray, how to read your word, how to live for God? We're going to help you with that. The person in front of you, they're going to pray with you. And they're going to help you get signed up, okay? So don't leave without getting signed up for that class because it's coming very soon. 
It's coming in, 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 in about a week or so. In a couple weeks or so, we're going to launch this class out, okay? Everyone bow your head and close your eyes. I want you to repeat this after me. We're going to pray right now. We're going to pray right now, and God's going to begin to touch you. Repeat this after me. Say, God, thank you for loving me. Loving me enough to take my sin upon you and to give me your righteousness. I believe in you, Jesus. I believe you died on the cross. And I believe you rose from the dead so that I can be saved. I put my faith in you. I repent of my sins. I change my mind about how I've been living. And I surrender my life completely to you. I'm holding nothing back. I give it all. I forgive anyone that's hurt me. I give you all my addictions. And I, re I release my life to you. Fill me now with your Holy Spirit. And give me a sensitivity to your voice. Father, fill them right now in the name of Jesus. These are your sons and these are your daughters right now, God. Fill them now in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that you would touch them, God. You would lead them. You would guide them. The pain in their heart, Father, set them free, God. Any bondage, God, we break it now in the name of Jesus. We take authority right now, Father, over every spirit that is trying to come in. Father, we rebuke it now in Jesus' name. These are your sons and daughters you've purchased with your blood. They put their faith in you, God. We thank you, Lord. Today they are saved. Today they are set free. Today their lives belong to you. And from this moment forward, they will never be the same again. I pray a blessing over their walk with you, over this journey, God. They're going to live for you, and they're not looking back, Father. Give them the strength to live for you. God, give them the fire and the passion to live every day for you, God. We give you glory, we give you praise, and we give you thanks. And in Jesus' name, we all say amen. Come on, can we give Jesus some praise today? Let's clap it up for everyone that gave their life to Jesus. If you came up here, don't leave without talking to somebody. Don't leave without speaking to someone at the altar. We want to pray with you. Church, we love you. Don't forget that this Wednesday night, we're having a worship night part of our Holy Ghost series. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be on fire. You don't want to miss this Wednesday night and it's going to be awesome. We love you church. Um, don't forget we got six spots left, only six spots that we just added for the marriage advance. So if you want to go, it's your last chance to jump in to the marriage advance. We love you church. If you need prayer, come on up. We'd love to pray with you. Remember if God is for you, there's no one who can come against you. God bless you church. Have a wonderful Sunday.